Today's focus is what is a put? And obviously a call is a way to offset it as well as how might you apply them as you're investing and trading in Tesla is our general theme for today. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Thanks once again for joining us. If this is your first time, welcome. If you're a repeat visitor, welcome back. We also want to thank our Patreon supporters. If you enjoy our show and like ideas on how to invest and trade in Tesla better, please join us on Patreon. I think this next two weeks is going to be one of the most important periods for investing and trading Tesla over the next three to five years because of the strong numbers and the introduction of new production. We also wanted to note this is a copyrighted broadcast. Any use without permission is prohibited. Uh, all rights are reserved. So today's kind of an interesting day. I, uh, <laughs> I've been getting a lot of notes from different uh, viewers regarding what is a put. So we had a show on two days ago regarding the fact that there are 81,000 puts at the 700 level. And uh, one of our viewers asked, what is that? And I, I like the question. And the more times people ask, it's a high likelihood that we really need to answer it. So um, there's, you know, there's a concept in calculus called triangulation. So if you explain something from one angle and then you explain from another and from another, there are different people that have emphasis points in terms of how they understand how things work. So um, that's what's going to go on today. It's not that I'm crazy or dumb. It's that the concept is somewhat complex and depending on your viewpoint and your experience, it can affect what you hear. So if you're an experienced trader investor, I just ask you to skip the first seven, eight minutes of this show and pick up the la pick up from there so I can get everybody else through it because we have to be more basic than we might usually be because we're explaining somewhat of a complex idea and trying to break it down multiple times. So um, the first thing I wanted to do, and we'll probably do it a couple of times this show, is to just put up a quick screen to explain there's a general area in investing called options. So you're obviously familiar with stock. Uh, when you invest your money, you own part of that company. Well, there are these what are called derivatives or other instruments that are out there. And one of the most basic in terms of what a lot of people use to make money or manage their money is an area called puts and calls. So um, the first thing I'd like to do is um, I'm going to reference it and not immediately, but I wanted you to have access to it. So I'd like to ask you to go to your computer and type in Yahoo, then type finance, then type options or top type Tesla, then uh, look in the middle of the page and you'll see something called options. I want you to click on that. So once you click on that, you're now in the world of options on Tesla. Uh, and this is kind of at the basic level because there are there could be if you look at all the derivations millions of different kinds of options on tesla because once you deal with one option you can combine it with others so the number of com crazy combinations the iron condor interesting combinations that are out there and all of these give you different ways in which you can invest and trade tesla stock maybe not directly but indirectly so uh today um what I wanted to first highlight to you is that there are actually three uh, methods that are used to price an option. The first is time. How much time is there before this option expires? The second me method is what's called implied volatility uh, is the official term. I like to call it delta. So if I switch between the two, you'll know exactly what I mean because I just felt like delta is delta meaning change is easier to sort of intrinsically grasp and in saying implied volatility. So the third thing is I want to say price proximity. So in, right now Tesla stock price at 750. So if you have a put or a call, the closer you are to what the current stock price is for that option, the higher the price it is. 
So therefore, if you have a 750 call, it's going to be very expensive. Whereas if you have a, call it an 850 call, okay, uh, not that expensive because it's not very close to the current price of the stock, um, if you will, in one direction, if that makes sense. And it will make more sense as we continue. So what I wanted to do next is I want to explain what the put is. I want to call it through the back door. So here's an example. If you own a home and you've purchased a home, what you didn't realize is that you were trading options. Why do I say that? So think about how a home price works. Let's take a theoretical $100,000 house. If um, you're planning to purchase that house, you're going to put earnest money, let's say $5,000 down. And after you put the money down, you're going to go back and say, um, uh, okay, what do you get for your $5,000 down? The answer is if you don't have other covenants, et cetera, that are built in, you're going to get uh, the right to purchase that home and they're going to give you theoretically uh, 45 days in order to purchase that, that house once you put your money down and agreed to buy it. And so there's this clock. Well, guess what? If they give you 45 days and you put 5,000 down to complete the, the deal and buy the house, for the fun of it, let's say um, you call them back and say, 45 is too quick, I need 90 days. What are they gonna say? The answer is if you, if uh, $5,000 gets you 45 days in time to complete the loan, uh, if you're asking for 90 days in theory, we're now talking twice the time. So the earnest money you have to put down is double. So that's going to cost you 10 grand. Why? Because you have more time to complete the deal. And the person who's allowing you to do this is not going to give you, uh, they're not going to give you any more time without you offering them so something in return. And you could, we could get crazy with this where we could say, Oh, let's say you wanted a year to complete this loan. Well, if 45 days is costing you $5,000, you can imagine what them giving you a year would cost you because you could simply keep multiplying based on, on time is what would normally occur. I mean, they may say, hey, just give me 10 grand, I'll give you a year, et cetera. That's possible. But for the sake of this example, that's what's happening. The flip side of this is this. What if somebody said to you, hey, um, I want to buy your house and I've got cash. And after we finish all the preliminary paperwork, you give me cash, we're done. In that circumstance, there's a low, low likelihood there's going to be earnest money because the time or time value in that circumstance is going to be zero. And therefore, uh, you know, instant checks. And this is why a lot of homeowners right now are, are getting cash for their homes and leaving because they don't have to deal with potential issues with the bank, et cetera, et cetera. They just get their checks and they're gone. So those able to pay in cash are winners. So why do I say you are trading an option? Well, guess what? You have 45 days to complete that. If you chose to complete it in 20 days, you still owe the, the same amount of earnest money, but it may be blended into the down payment on the house, et cetera. So real estate is an easy way to sort of introduce options, but it's not as easy because um, let me throw a couple of scenarios out to you. Let's say you have your 5,000 earnest money down and it was discovered that there's a toxic waste dump underneath the house and it's about to collapse. Well, in theory, if you'd written to the contract with your due diligence, you wouldn't, you get your money back and it'd be done on, um, you know, and so that's one of the things that could happen. The other thing that could happen is you didn't have any other provisions and you have a choice buy a hundred thousand dollar house that's going to be worth zero or lose five grand and just walk away so that's more how options work is once you put your money in you tend not to have any other choices other than take the loss the uh, thing about houses that's different from stocks is one of the reasons why options were invented was to address the problem of portfolio managers who owned a lot of shares that may have increased in value a lot, and they're trying to protect their gains. So what you can use options for is a hedge or an insurance policy against um, 
let's call it the decline in value of a stock. So for example, let's switch over and say that 100 grand we did for the house was actually uh, involved in somebody who had, let's say, a $100 million gain on a stock. They could sit there when major news comes out, like earnings or production, like with Tesla, and the stock can drive, drop dramatically and wipe out all their gains, or they could insure themselves by buying options, in this case, uh, what are called puts, in case the stock price of, the, of Tesla falls. They now get paid nicely because uh, they anticipated wanting to protect themselves from unknowns that might occur at this time. So this in general gives you a sense for there's something called a call option, which is basically what you're doing when you buy a house. A put option is kind of the opposite of this. So if you owned, a, if you were buying that house and didn't want to lose all your money, you could in theory have bought a put, except for puts are really not used when it comes to house values. You either sell the house or keep it, and you're, you're kind of in that situation. But when it comes to stock, they do have instruments that allow you to insure yourself against loss. Now, one of the things that's happened is that, let's say you have one options contract, and I'll call it a call option, and I'll call it Tesla. So what'll happen is that anytime you buy, let's say, one call option on an instrument, let's say this is Tesla, each of those options that you're buying represents control of 100 shares of Tesla stock. So what that means is that if you wanted to, you could go back and say, hey, the stock price rose a lot. I want to take delivery of the stock. I'm not going to sell the options. And they have to, you give them the money for 100 shares, they'll give you the 100 shares. And so what's interesting about options is there's a lot of ways to exercise them. You could sell them and make money. You can wait and exercise the value of the stock and hold on to the stock if you wanted. There's just a myriad of options that you have going on of what you could do with that. So um, one of the things that we've been watching for the last several weeks, one of the reasons why people get involved with puts and calls, and in this case, primarily puts, is we've had a process going with Tesla where every Monday the stock price will jump dramatically 20, 30 points. And then if you watch it, as the week progresses, we have this downward strike uh, for the week. And what I wanted to introduce today in general is an idea called scalping. So what that means is that you're kind of like the one where you grab somebody's head and you take a, a scalp to it and scalp a little bit off of it. There are a lot of traders who actually are in a stock for as little as milliseconds because what they're looking for is an incremental one or two, you know, hopefully a dollar or two, but it might be as little as 50 cents. And they make enough money to leave then and wait for another opportunity to scalp or take a small amount of profit. Now, there's probably half the people on our show who actually do trade options and maybe do hedging or they trade options well into next year. So it's a very secure thing that they're doing. So there's a large list of ways in which to trade and invest everything that's options, especially in including Tesla. So I just got a note from one of my Patreon supporters who indicated that he's a an employee of Tesla is not allowed to trade in certain instruments, and I believe those are options. And he actually said to me, well, what other stocks are out there that behave similarly to Tesla that I can use my Tesla knowledge to trade in, be it options, uh, call puts, etc." And I think the answer I'd go to that is there's probably a group of tech stocks that fit this bill. Those might include Amazon, they include Google, they include uh, Moderna, some of the drug stocks have seen some major action in this regard, NVIDIA, all these stocks have volatility, but Tesla has its own unique ability to move. So one of the things when you trade options that everybody's looking for is what's called implied volatility or delta. The more delta or implied volatility, the more money you can make on the option, whether it's rising or falling. So the trend have been so an example of how all this works would be over the last, let's say, four weeks, if every day, for the, if every Monday you had purchased Tesla stock or option for that matter and sold it 
at the end of the day on Monday, and then Tuesday, you bought the exact same strike price put on Tesla and waited until Friday and sold it, your stock, uh, because the stock jumped 20, 30 points on that Monday, typically, you would have made a nice, you know, double, triple your money, depending on what you traded, what option you purchased or sold. Then, uh, if you went into Tuesday and bought puts and waited till Friday, you'd probably have doubled or tripled your money because of the downward draft that the stock typically has done heading into Friday for the last four to six weeks. So this is one way that people actually make really good money because uh, you amplify the gain in options that you might have on a stock. So I so this is an example of how scalping works. So if you're really a true scalper, you might stay in once Tesla starts its run, you may stay in for very short periods, as in two or three uh, minutes or 20 or 30 minutes or an hour or two, because you're getting the run on the stock you'd like. One of the other challenges with scalping Tesla is you'll notice that the trend they have is to sort of rise in the afternoons when we get to a Friday like this and Monday morning, most of the gains will happen pre-market. So it makes it harder for you to scalp it because the market makers are keeping that updraft and gain to themselves. But a lot of consumers get excited when they see that price rise because they're like, uh oh, this is it. Tesla stock price is really going to go up. And on each occasion, they've been disappointed to find that the market makers push the price up and then it starts this slow, steady decline on each of these. So um, what I noticed this week in particular is that the options uh, change daily in terms of the number of people that have bought or sold. And uh, this morning prior to the show, I actually looked it up and there were 81,000 puts at 700 on Tuesday into Wednesday. And now there's like, you know, a few thousand. So once people take positions in these, they can get rid of them fairly quickly or buy them, etc. All the above is a possibility. What do I think is gonna happen today? We're around noon and it's a Friday. Um, I'm putting up some charts here at the end so you can look at the screens that would normally occur. But basically, Tesla stock price is around 750. There are more calls than puts, but the goal of the op of the market makers is to um, make sure a lot of people lose money and that money is lost to them. So what I'm forecasting today, Friday the 17th, is that Tesla drops into that you know, for 74 and a quarter, 74 and a, you know, 74, 50, 745 or in that neighborhood is why, what I expect because there are a lot more people that own calls than puts and therefore the market makers make more money when they force the stock price down. So that's my general take. I could, I mean, we're at about 20 minutes now and I'm inclined to, I could go endlessly on this because after you do it for a while, you kind of know what's going on. We actually have classes on this and we have one-on-one -on -one coaching. So you can drop us a note, FCP1 at AOL, and you know we could uh, introduce you to our classes, introduce you to uh, other ways to get a grasp of what's going on. Um, the other thing you'll notice is that uh, occasionally I'll talk about encouraging people to look at leaps into next year, which are options that are like a year out. And there's a lot of reasons why you would do that, particularly if you t think Tesla stock price is going to do well, you might want to consider um, using some of your uh, ability to pull cash from stock you've made and pick up some leaps into next year. Because with all the production coming on, I think Tesla is going to do very, very well over the next year and therefore the stock and therefore the options. You know, the reason why people will do options often is you get five to 10 times the return you do on the stock. So if you're confident about your research on the stock and what it's gonna do, that's why people might move over into leaps and experience a lot of potential gains there. So I hope all of you who've asked, what the heck is a put, an insurance policy that you can buy against the, the stock potentially declining in general is one way to look at it. Um, but it can be lucrative if you just do the options and you don't own the stock. So that's another way to think about it as well. At any rate, I look forward to constructive comments on this. This is a copyrighted broadcast, just to remind you. Um, we also will next move on to our health tips. 
just a reminder, I wanted to encourage you to consider the 5-2 or other uh, fasting diets I'm kind of working with right now, uh, particularly as I'm on the No Sugar for Two Weeks program that Dr. Berg gave me that you might want to take a look at. Um, also wanted to encourage you to consider uh, nature, getting out into nature. Um, it's called forest bathing, and our effort to drag you into that is by including at the end three to five minutes worth of uh, ocean sound for you to just breathe in, maybe close your eyes and em embrace sort of the energy of the water as you're maybe taking a break from the day or evening. Um, we have other tips that are listed below. The biggest one I would recommend is to consider don't eat within two hours of going to bed to allow the food to digest would be my highly, highest on the list, but there are a number of great tips given to us by doctors from uh, many different specialties. At any rate, uh, I want to thank you again for joining us. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, German, au revoir, French, Lehi, Throat, Hebrew, Choda, Hafez, Farsi, Na, Ni Hao Ma, Chinese, Namaste, Hindi, Konbanwa, Japanese, Hey Do, Swedish, Good Day, our friends in Australia. And uh, in Jamaica, we say enough respect, walk good man. Thanks for joining us and have a great day. Have a great day and bye for now.